Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're making a caddy to hold together all of my super glue so it doesn't keep tipping over on me. Let's dive in. So I keep all of these down here. The problem is when they are in this tray and something bumps it, they, they tend to fall over and I get epoxy buildup on the tip. And I don't like that. So here you can see when I take the tip off, there's always a bunch of junk at the tip. And the problem with that is because they tend to fall over and it gets gooey on there. Is if I can leave them uh, upright, then I don't get that buildup at the tip and I usually have less of a problem with it. So we're gonna create a storage container that can hold all these together because a lot of times the best projects are the ones that fix the solutions or that fix the problems that you have. They're the solutions to fix the, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So where are we gonna make this out of? I have my white oak and I have walnut and I I could make it without other things, but these two pieces are big enough that I can create some holes for them to hold into. And I have this scrap of walnut. I've been working on this for a, a long time. I actually got this scrap. It was much, much larger, um, probably about five or six years ago, and slowly been making a bunch of projects out of it. The problem with it is it used to have this pith going right through the middle, and in the past I cut it down along that pith, so now these are actually quarter sawn, which is really kind of cool, um, but it means that I still have a little bit of pith on one end to, to work off. So we're going to start by squaring this up. Uh, if you've never done dimensioning wood by hand, I have a few videos on that. I don't do it a whole lot on the, the channel anymore because it, it's kind of the same thing. You start with one edge or face and then make that 90 degrees to the first edge or face. And then you can take the third edge or face and make that 90 degrees to the first edge or face. And then to make the opposite parallel face exactly the same, you put a marking gauge all the way around referencing the first face. And then you just plane it down until you touch that marking gauge. Uh, it's a relatively straightforward process. Uh, work with the scrub plane to get the most of it off and then come in with a general rough plane to get it down close to the line and then smooth it out. If they're on bigger boards, you might need a jointer. Uh, but sometimes I just work with my normal four or five. For this last face, it is uh, a bit more to take off and I'm not gonna scrub that off. So we're gonna come in with the saw and just rip it down and uh, get ourselves our block that's really, really close. Um, if you get good with a saw, you can have a relatively clean surface that just takes a few passes with the plane to clean up. This one was three or four passes with the rough plane and then three or four passes with the clean one and we're good to go. For this last face, I could have shot it on the shooting board, shoot it, shot it. I could have cleaned it up on the shooting board, uh, but it was a little bit more to clean off, so I find it a little easier to uh, come in and, and rough it out. We're gonna be cleaning those up a little bit later after the chamfer, so I'm not going to smooth them down just yet. I'm gonna use some dividers to find out exactly where the center of this board is. And you guess at where the center is, and then you swing the divider around, and then you move the pin halfway back towards where it is. And then I can find a point that is centered on either side, and then the same distance from the end. For the big hole, I'm going to be using the hole saw to cut this down. And a lot of times this works out very, very well. Most of the time I end up making the hole in another board and using it as a guide to drill the first one. Um, but the, the, the lead screw tends to wobble around a bit. Yeah, I know. I pulled out the hand drill. I've done plenty of videos making a hole saw with a brace. You can do it. It does work. Uh, it's just a, a, bit, uh, a bit wobbly. It takes a little more time. And just like that, we did the whole thing with the, the bit and brace, right? <laughs> we'll remove the, the waste from the middle here in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, every now and then you do have to pull out the, uh, the demon-possessed yellow brace. For the other ones, these actually need to be an oval shape. And then this last one needs to be a circle. So we're going to figure out exactly where they come out so that the spacing is all even kind of eyeball it and then figure out eh, where we want to head on here. I want to create the center points where we're going to drill this one out. Uh, the larger one, I believe, was inch and an eighth. Um, and so I want to go until just before that tip comes out the other side. Uh, I should have cranked that one down a little tighter. Oh, well. For these ones, we're going to make an oval slot rather than making an ellipsoid oval. It'll be just a, a standard oval. And so I need to find out where the pins need to be. I'm going to drill two holes on either end and play connect the dots. Um, so I can figure out how far apart these holes need to be, use the calipers to make sure that they're the exact same from one side to the other. And then I can come in with the auger bit and drill out these two holes side by side. This will leave uh, some chunks in the middle, but just like with a mortise, we can uh, come in and remove those out. And I had a little bit of problem with one of these with the bit wanting to slide over to the side. Um, so I needed to uh, end up pre-drilling the hole with a smaller, uh, smaller bit. And this gave a spot for the screw on the auger bit to follow that hole down. 
uh, that gives you a much cleaner and straighter hole. So if you find your auger bit is working its way over to the side, pre-drill the hole and this will give you something for it to follow and it will stay nice and true. So we have four of those holes um, to create the two ovals. I can come in with a chisel and kind of play connect the dots on the side and remove the waist down. And this is <laughs> such a pleasing step. I'm very, very happy. Anytime you get those little wisps on the side, you can clean up the rounded edges, uh, find a gouge with a slightly smaller diameter, and it cleans it up fairly nicely. For this last block, we're going to remove the waste. Uh, grab a chisel and go to town on it. And this is, this is fun. Anytime you get to blow up big blocks with a chisel, it is very enjoyable. You just work at it from one side, and then turn around and work at it from the other side, and go back and forth until you get close to the bottom. The nice thing about this is the hole saw has left me a nice even bottom all the way around, and so I just want to go until I touch that hole. Most of it you can just do bevel down, and there's really no reason for this to be perfectly clean, and so I would generally just hit it with a bevel. But I want to try something a little bit different with this. This hole is um, a decent amount deeper than I would normally use with a router plane, uh, but I found on this one if I take the router plane iron out of the depth adjuster, I could get it to go down even farther, and I took it down to an inch and a quarter. Uh, so it was a chance for me to experiment with it. You can get everything right up until you get to those corners, and so you can come in with the gouge and clean them out. We're going to chamfer all the edges, and if you put the bevel down on the chisel, you can actually ride the bevel and take an even chamfer all the way around. Just make sure you go with the grain, and so that means start from the edge of it and run around the other way. Uh, each edge, you have to go in different directions, so you're basically going in four different directions as you go around this. This one ended up being a little bit more sloppy than I wanted, but it was enough to hold it in place so it's not going to fall over when the bench is wobbling around. The rest of them are really nice and tight. These ones kind of fit down in there and they, they hold very well. This one was really tight. I could have made that hole a little bit bigger, um, but I like how this came out. And so now these bottles aren't going to be tipping over and filling up with glue. So now it's functional. At this point, everything else is just making it pretty. And since this is wood by right, we're going to be putting a lot of chamfers on it because, you know, chamfers, they're what separate us from the animals. <laughs> I love that quote. Uh, yes, um, heavy chamfers on it just make everything look a little bit nicer. At the ends, we can clean up and uh, get those nice and smooth. Uh, they don't have to be perfectly square, and so I'm not going to put them on the shooting board. I'm just going to freehand them. For the end chamfers, you just skew the plane a little bit so you're actually going uh, towards the ends, and it allows you to shear off those end fibers. Uh, I probably should have chamfered the corners before hitting the end. That way you can be a little more careful, but as long as you're careful just going into the middle, it works out fine. For the finish, of course, this is wood by right, boiled linseed oil, and paste wax. Don't need anything special on this. I just like the way it comes out, especially with the walnut. It makes it so warm and appealing, and it's just so fast and easy. I put it on, let it soak up as much as it wants, particularly on the inside. Uh, let that end grain soak that up. And I'll, I'll just keep adding it, letting it soak up more and more until it stops soaking it up. Uh, and then we'll wipe off the excess. After that, we can apply paste wax, and I use the, the soft paste wax that I, that I sell on my website. Um, rub that on to the, the block, let it sit, and wipe it off. And I usually put it on only about 10-15 minutes after applying the boiled linseed oil. It doesn't need a lot of time to cure on there. And just like that, we have our glue tote ready to go wherever I want it to go without it tipping over. Uh, it's fun when you have these little problems in the shop that really aren't problems, uh, but they kind of annoy you, and so you can do something to make it better, something that's not going to cause as much of an issue in the future. And so simple little project like this works out really well, and I, I enjoy it. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> dumb project. Not everyone's going to want one of these, but if you do, there you go. That's how you do it. So have a little bit of fun, try something different, and don't let your glue tip over. So there you have it. This is a, a relatively simple project. It's kind of fun to figure out the oval holes and things for it to fit in and spacing it out. Learning that layout is a key skill that you use all over the place. And if you can figure out distances and measurements and halfways and a year long ways along the woodworking journey. It is something that I could put on a shelf or move somewhere else, but for right now it lives underneath the bench because that's where I know it's at. But maybe in the future I'll make some shelf for it to sit on. I, I really wanted something so that these don't tip over because once they tip over, all of the CA runs up into the tip and slowly works its way out and causes all sorts of problems. And so now, 
They have a place to live without moving around, and I really like this. So I hope you like it, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. What could I have done differently? There are lots of other things I could add on to this, and I would love to hear that. Maybe I'll do some update in the future. Uh, let me know that down in the comments down below. That does help me out. I learn a lot from there, as well as it helps out the channel. Anytime you throw a comment down there, as well as hitting the like, the share, subscribing. Thank you. Uh, without that, uh, no one would know about us because the algorithm lives and breathes on those. So thank you. If you want to take it even farther, there are a bunch of names of people over here. Those are all of patrons on Patreon. Uh, we also have memberships here on the channel. And between memberships and patrons, uh, you guys are the ones who quite literally keep us going. Without patrons and members, we wouldn't exist. So thank you. If you'd like to find out more about that, well, you know where to do that down in the description. Click the little join button and thank you. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. The really cool thing about this is these really are a sticky situation, and this is a really fast sticky situation, but thankfully it comes with the deactivator so you can get out of your sticky situations. So I hope you like it if you... Uh.